The president, of course, really wants to get the company, the country opened. Uh, the states are making this decision. It is a patchwork. That's the kind way to put it. It's more realistically a hodgepodge. It is a mixed bag. Some state, and you know, the the silliness of the difference between two states is sort of exemplified in what I did over the weekend. You know, I got, an, I'm, an, you know, just got antsy. I'm cooped up. Decided I wanted to get a haircut. Drove north on I-75, got into Georgia, had a barber picked out, waited outside. They were only doing one person at a time. Can't do that in Florida. No haircuts in Florida, but Georgia's okay. And you look at the numbers, and of course, the Georgia numbers, the Florida numbers are relatively comparable. All the governors are making different decisions. And it is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit maddening. The president, I think, is frustrated by it enormously. But you know what? You wouldn't have you wouldn't have sensed that frustration last night on this virtual town hall they did on Fox News in front of the Lincoln Memorial. The president making some some headlines at the at, at the uh, town hall when he talked about vaccines. Um, this seems to be, and I, I'm even nervous about this whole panacea of vaccinations. You know, uh, there are some estimates claiming, and I even hate to repeat this because they have no idea, because I know they're they're sort of making this up as they go. But over the weekend, there were a lot of comments, a lot of scientists suggesting this this virus will be around us and will be present for at least two years. I'm thinking, man, we will not have a country left if we're shut down for anywhere close to two years. And I, I don't know, I, I, I was talking to some people over the weekend about vaccination. There's a flu vaccine. And yet there are plenty of people, and I'm not comparing coronavirus to flu. This is much more contagious. It's much more dangerous. But nonetheless, there's a flu vaccine. We don't, we don't see people not die from the flu. So, so there's a coronavirus vaccine. We're still going to have 40, 50, 60, 70,000 deaths a year to coronavirus. And will that force the Lori Lightfoots and the Gretchen Whitmers and the uh, the Gil Garcettis and the Gavin Newsoms of the world to keep everything shut down for two years? At some point, y- you say enough is enough is enough. But again, the president was very calm last night. Let's uh, Let's listen in as he talked about the timetable for what he believes will be the revelation of a vaccination. I think we're going to have a vaccine by the end of the year. Now, the doctors would say, well, you shouldn't say that. I'll say what I think. I've met with the heads of the big companies. These are great companies. Yeah, I think we're going to have a vaccine uh, much sooner rather than later. I think it will be. I think that will be done. I would rather have, frankly, therapeutic, meaning something to make people better, if not a cure, at least a therapeutic. Now, there was another big conversation about China. Um, and this is something that I think is a, ought to be nonpartisan, uh, kind of difficult to, to make a left-right argument out of the fact that something terrible happened out of Wuhan, China. The president, of course, has access to lots of intelligence that we, never, that we don't see. Uh, the president weighed in on the role of China and how this virus spread all over the world. What they really treated the world badly on they stopped people going into china but they didn't stop people going into the usa and all over the world so you could fly out of wuhan where the primary problem was all of the problem essentially also where the lab is but you could fly out of wuhan and you could go to different parts of the world but you couldn't go to beijing and you couldn't go to any place in china so what's that all about in other words, they knew they had a problem. I think they were embarrassed by the problem, very embarrassed. And, the, you know, the case could be made. They said, hey, look, this is going to have a huge impact on China, and we might as well let the w- rest of the world, because the last people they want, we've had a great year against China prior to the virus coming. And I told you, 67 or so years, the worst economy they've had. Worst they've almost on record that they've ever had because of my negotiations and because I taxed them on the product that they brought in. And by the way, they paid for that tax. It wasn't our people. They paid for that tax. They devalued their currency. But here's the thing. They allowed this to go into our country. 
they allowed it to go into other countries. So, you know, and then finally he weighed in on this ridiculous, goofy, mindless debate about medicines. I, I had a Never Trumper write over the weekend and, and, and showed an article. Apparently one of the Fox News Channel personalities is now pushing back against remdesivir. And I don't, I, honest to goodness, this is such a, a, I have such a disconnect with politicizing medicines. The left doesn't want to want to look at hydroxychloroquine because Trump touted it. Now, now Fauci likes remdesivir. So now somebody, now we're pushing back against remdesivir. Well, how could we be taking sides on medicine? I got an idea. If hydroxychloroquine, if hydroxychloroquine works, use it along with, uh, you know, zinc and a Z-pack. If it doesn't, then try remdesivir. Who the heck cares which drug? What, 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 the, what the heck is going on with this politicization of medicines? As if any of us are scientists or doctors and know. What we do know is there are people who evidently are being helped by hydroxychloroquine and remdesivir. I got an idea, so I like them both. I mean, why would I take a side? Why, now, how do I ignore all of the, the people I know personally, including John McConnell, the former ABC News executive in Florida now, who says his life was saved when his doctor decide, decided to prescribe hydroxychloroquine and a Z-Pack? I'm supposed to pretend that didn't happen? What, what am I supposed to, if I've got reservations about Dr. Fauci, I'm not supposed to be pro-remdesivir because he, li he likes it? What the heck is wrong with people? The president addressed the debate last night at the town hall. Here's, here's what we've been reduced to in this country. The Democrats, the radical left, whatever you want, would rather see people, I'm going to be very nice, I'm not going to say die, I'm going to say would rather see people not get well because they think I'm going to get credit if, you know, hydroxychloroquine works. And I don't want the, I don't care about it. I have nothing to do with it, by the way. Everyone said I own the company. I have nothing to do with hydroxychloroquine. Other than if it worked, it would be great. It would be so good for our nation because it would save people. I mean, that's what we, he's right. He's right. We're reduced to, to competing medicines. And again, I thought it was unique to the left. If it's true that there was some Fox News host, I think it was Laura, maybe it was Tucker, I think it was Laura. Well, oh, well, uh, there's no science on remdesivir. Why, 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 why would we push back against any potential drug that could be effective in fighting this awful virus? And, of course, when you do that, you just give the other side the same ammunition. Up to now, it's been the pushback against hydroxychloroquine. Uh, maybe that information was wrong. I hope that was wrong because that would be ridiculous to, go, to, to wage a campaign against what medical experts are hoping and cautiously optimistic would be working, this remdesivir. Um, I know one thing, if I get it, I'm asking the doctor immediately, please, please prescribe what you think will work, including the option of hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and a Z-pack, because I've seen personally lives saved by that prescription. And we get into the whole thing about how much it costs and remdesivir. Just, just let the medical experts do their best. They don't want to lose patients on their watch. 17 minutes before the hour. And then, of course, the president talking ultimately about the return. The biggest question for millions of small business owners, people who are cautiously, ex you know, excitedly hoping, hoping, hoping to reopen the president addressed um, going back to school and this slow but deliberate process of reopening the country. Are you going to urge the nation's universities and schools to go back in September? I am. I want them to go back. We have to get our country back. Yeah. I don't want to do this forever. Uh, I watched uh, a very good governor, former, former governor of Indiana, uh, preceding, he preceded Mike Pence, good governor, and uh, he's the head of Purdue. It's a great school. And I saw him the other day. He wants to go back. He's going back, Purdue. So, you know, this is a, this is a balance. It's tough. It's challenging. And don't think that the people who are losing their minds over any state daring to reopen aren't going to be watching the statistics out of Georgia 
out of Florida, out of South Carolina. We all have to be ready for the fact that there probably will be an increase in infections. Um, hopefully, we're ahead of the curve in terms of our ability to treat those infections and hopefully get people well. But the alternative is unthinkable. The alternative is to stay shut down for two years. What will this country look like? That's impossible. And, you know, what, what people are afraid to admit, what people are afraid to say out loud, is that there is an unthinkable scenario where we're going to ex be expected to have the country shut down, largely, until the day comes when the virus is no longer in America. Well, that's like, it seems to me that's like saying we're going to stay shut until some other virus or some other contagion or some other flu goes away. It's not, ha it's not going to happen. It's not possible. And now at least the conversation is about the 30 or 35 states or whatever that are slowly starting to open and taking baby steps towards getting this country healed again.